Hello and welcome everyone. Come find a comfortable seat. We're so excited you are here. We have friends online as well. Welcome everyone, good to see you. If you're online, we have a chat. We want you to use it. We want to hear where you are calling in from and learn a little bit more about what you are doing. So uh, as we kind of find our seats, we will welcome you and tell you a little bit more about the program. Go ahead online, tell us where you are chatting in from. We got folks I see all the way from England, all the way over to uh, South Dakota, really far away. I know it's working because my parents are in the chat, so great to see you. If you see me run off the stage, I'm expecting a baby any day, so I have my phone is only going to ring if a baby is on the way. Uh, and then Polly will bravely take over, I'm assuming. So she doesn't know that yet. But welcome, everyone. I'm Scott Meyer. I'm so excited to have you. And I wanted to start with a quick story. About 140 years ago, there was a sign that was pasted on the side of a school, and that was the launch of what was then Jamestown College. And I think it's really interesting to think about you know, people going to the edge, right? going to the frontier at the time, and really saying, what is needed? What do we need to build here to make this community vibrant? And I think today, that's what we're doing, is really looking at our community and asking, what do we need to make a vibrant community? And how can University of Jamestown play a role in that? So that is what we're going to talk about today. So before we dive in, we want to uh, get you all warmed up, of course. So we have attendees here from all over the world. Um, so what we want to do is ask you a little bit about if you have any affiliation with the University of Jamestown. So if you have an affiliation with the University of Jamestown, on the count of three, I want you to yell, go Jimmies. OK, one, two, three. Go Jimmies. OK, perfect. If you're on the chat right now, I want you to type in go Jimmies, and we'll see how many people on the chat are calling in. We got people from. Raleigh from Brazil, from Montana, from Wicklow, Ireland, from Bismarck. Welcome all of you. We'll be uh, chatting with you throughout the event. So now we have people from all over the world, um, and we're really excited to share ideas. So let's dive in. Um, so about three months ago, I had a chance encounter um, with a, a brilliant woman that was happened to be in Fargo, as many of us happened to be. Uh, and uh, we started talking about education. And she painted this really fascinating vision uh, around a lot of the ideas that I'd been thinking about, which is if you had a blank slate, if you were starting over with the education system, how would you build it? How would you make it accessible, make it impactful, teach students what they need to really impact their communities? Um, that person ended up hiring me uh, to, to, to make some of those ideas come to life. And I'm really excited uh, to welcome her to the stage. So I want to welcome to the stage Dr. Dr. Polly Peterson, the president of the University of Jamestown, to get us started with today's event. So welcome, Polly. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me? All right. Hello, everybody out there uh, in Zoom land. And um, we're so, so, so excited to be here. And thank you. Those of you um, out there, you can't see this room, but it is filled with people. And it's really an honor for me to share with you a little bit about the University of Jamestown and then a little bit about how we got here. Nearly 138 years ago, as Scott said, um, a group of really courageous leaders um, opened the first college in North Dakota. And many of you probably don't realize that, but that first college was in Jamestown. It was on a bluff that overlooked the beautiful James River Valley. We weren't the first maybe to open our doors, but we were the first to charter. Um, and we are very proud of that. Since that, we have been innovative. We have been growing um, opportunities for students for those 138 years. Learners come to us with hopes and dreams that by opening the doors to education, their future will be filled with opportunity. That by choosing UJ, that would forever be blessed by the people that they encountered while they were studying with us. About three months ago, oh, that's yours. I can't, I can't, I can't read yours. <laughs> with each passing decade, the university has become stronger because of people like you. People who believed in education, people who believed in investing in the future and the lives of others. I can't say thank you enough to all of you who believed in us, from the trustees in this room, to the faculty we have in this room, to even some of the students who were blessed by the encounter they had while they were at the University of Jamestown. 
You might be interested to know that during a time when a lot of the educational institutions are declining, UJ is not. This is our second year of record enrollment. And in fact, this year, we increased enrollment by 13%. We are eternally grateful for that. Um, our enrollment, as long as I've been associated with the university, we had this somehow this goal of 1,200, and this year we went past it by 150, and we reached 1,300 students. U.S. News and World Report in Princeton, if you follow them, they also recognized um, that, that the University of Jamestown is a top school in the Midwest. They also, U.S. News also recognized that we are the top school in the Midwest as ranked in our category. In the past 10 years, we've invested over $100 million to renovate and construct new facilities, expand scholarship opportunities for our students, and grow new programs. But as all great leaders know, success is short-lived if we spend our times looking in the rearview mirror, where we all know the future is not. It has never been more important for universities like ours to look forward and plan for an economy that is definitely changing. So in the past four years, the university's leadership has been out listening. We've been listening to businesses, we've been listening to faculty, we've been listening to future students, and we developed a very aggressive strategic plan. That strategic plan is the reason that this university is growing. We are prepared to meet the needs of a 21st century economy because of a shared vision that UJ will become the best career-oriented liberal arts university in the Midwest. And I am convinced that we are doing just that. One of the things if you've been associated with the university you know is that we are about the people. UJ is about the people. When we opened our campus 138 years ago, students came to us from all over the globe. They have been since that very day. And we are adding this new division in order to continue to provide opportunities that will change the way learners can access education at UJ. By establishing this new division, we are calling it UJ Accelerated. We are recognizing that learning does not begin and end the same way for every student. Through UJ Accelerated, learners can study from a growing number of credentials, short-term certificates, and micro-credential opportunities that will be stackable into the university's many degrees and degree plus programs. Through this university, through this new division, the university is proud to say that we will serve the 73% of students who are now accessing education in a non-traditional way. Whether you are reskilling, whether you are upskilling, or you are in need of advancing your degree in some way, we are here to serve you. And we will do that in a way that Scott will talk about is very different than what other universities are doing. I'm very proud to introduce some of the people that are involved in this new initiative and have been with the university for quite some time. Scott will be bringing them up later, but I just want to say my thanks, first of all, to the Board of Trustees that are in this room, who had the courage to believe in us and to invest in this massive project. It is a seven-year project. It will grow to over, over 40 programs. Paul tells me 70 in seven years. 70 programs in seven years. We have an aggressive strategic plan and with this team, we are confident that we are going to serve a growing number of learners that UJ has not served, probably no university has served in the past. So thank you to the trustees. Thank you to Tina Lawrence, our executive vice president, who's running project management on this. Thank you to Paul Olson, who's our provost. You will be introduced to Shelley Gardner, who's our vice president of operations, and Nola Zarnick who is our innovative program designer. But now I will turn it over to you, Scott, so that you can continue on with the program. All right, thank you. <laughs> I'll, take the, I'll take that, thanks. Give me that one. Fantastic, well, we heard from 
people online. So we want to quick hear from where everyone's from in this room, where you call home now. So on the count of three, shout out wherever home is for you. One, two, three. All right. Good to see you all. Some good representation there. That's fantastic. So what we want to talk about next is why we're doing this, how we're doing it, and then what we're actually doing, right? So you can learn a little bit about it. Now, when we think about why we're doing this program, uh, we wanted to bring in someone who's always on the road traveling around the world trying to uh, solve a really big problem, with, which is workforce development. So while he was originally going to be on camera, he's now traveling to uh, an event. And I think he's calling in, but he's in, he's in the middle of western North Dakota. So we're not sure if we have him. Do we have James? All right, we do. This is uh, the commissioner of the North Dakota Department of Commerce. Hey, James, how are you? Looking good. Hey, how are you? Sorry, I am literally just south of Watford City because we do travel quite a bit. Um, but thank you. It, it, can I go, Scott? Can yeah, I yeah we're, we'd love to have you. Okay, first and foremost, James Lamont, Commerce Commissioner for the state of North Dakota. Originally from New Jersey. I don't know if anybody in the room happened to be from New Jersey, but um, anyway live from uh, just south of Watford City, and this is super refreshing. Listening to the president talk about kind of the future of workforce, how the University of Jamestown, well, with this comes that, I apologize, uh, how the University of Jamestown is looking proactively at tackling these, uh, this, this particular approach is, is super, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing, it's refreshing, and frankly, as the, uh, the, the cabinet leader who heads workforce development efforts, in addition to, um, uh, economic development and community development efforts, I am really amazed by what I just heard. Um, just to give you kind of a look at what the future state of the economy looks like here in North Dakota. Uh, today we have 30,000 open jobs. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Uh, if I'm standing here four years from now having this conversation with you, I suspect the number will be closer to 60 to 70,000 based on the fact that we have roughly $25 billion worth of economic development projects currently in the queue within the state of North Dakota as I speak with you. A lot of those are gonna require high tech, high skill uh, that'll benefit from these uh, these stackable credentials. Instead of looking at it from the prism of, you know, 10 people operating something on a line or 10 people operating a piece of equipment within the energy patch, think of it as two or three people doing it, but doing it in a manner that they would make, you know, probably twice what they would make than they would have historically had it been a more manual process. We're seeing that in the energy sector. We're seeing that in the ag sector. We're seeing that nexus points between energy and ag. And equally as importantly, as we're building the next generation energy economy with a carbon neutral goal by 2030 through, regu or through innovation versus regulation, we're also looking at it from the prism of um, how do we diversify the state's economy? A lot of that will be done in high tech. Bio manufacturing, we're going big on unmanned systems development and the requisite computational sciences and augmented industries that support that particular sector. And so it's really nice to see this model coming to fruition over the next seven years at Jamestown uh, because it'll help us meet these drastic workforce shortages that we're facing. Um, the long and the short is this. Um, next week, we'll begin legislative hearings on what is called Accelerate ND. So I like the fact that Jamestown had the acceleration perspective as well. Um, that is a $1.2 billion approach that the governor proposed last week uh, to basically move this state forward in a fashion that encapsulates a lot of what you're doing here within the Jamestown uh, sort of perspective. I apologize for the massive 18 wheelers that keep passing by, but again, I'm on the road. Um, so the long and the short is we're really excited. We have $400 million approximately in economic and workforce development proposals. Many of those will augment the work you're doing uh, as, as you look forward uh, toward more technically advanced as well as technical credentialing. And I just want to thank the university for, for being a part of this. And I'd like to invite the university to be a part of strategic discussions with us. We liaise frequently at the University of Mary because of their proximity to um, Bismarck, or proximity, because they're in Bismarck and they have some super amazing programs as far as uh, what they're doing uh, with their truncated programs, but also how they're meeting demand uh, within the workforce. And I'd love to bring you guys in on that as too, as well as our public schools, uh, because we, we need that to happen. We need a systems level approach to solve for this workforce challenge, whether it be in clean energy development, whether it be in agriculture and ag tech, or whether it be in um, the unmanned system sector, biomanufacturing, and all of the industries that encompass the $25 billion worth the CapEx we're currently working on. So thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me do this from, um, was this Highway 83 or Highway 85? 
And uh, I hope you have an amazing remainder of your conference. Thanks, James. Good to see you. And, you know, the, the need is there, right? We see a, a huge demand, not only in North Dakota, but across the country. And at UJ Accelerator, we really want to not only meet that need, but meet it in a way that we think will provide education that's powerful. So in our mind, it's not putting videos up on YouTube and, and asking people to watch them, right? We think that education can be more. And what University of Jamestown's always done is had a student-centric approach, right? A personal approach. You know your teachers. You, you talk to them. You get to know the faculty. Years later, you come to things like this because you care about your university. And that's why we're excited with our programs that they're really going to focus on three key areas. So first of all, all the programs that we offer are going to obviously have knowledge. You're going to gain the knowledge you need uh, to work in the careers that you want. And that's going to be taught by people who are experts in those areas. The second thing that we're really focused on is building network. We know that for someone to get started in a career or to move up in their career, it's often through referrals, through people who help them continue learning. So we want to put a priority on professional network and connecting with uh, guest speakers who come in, uh, people who are teaching the courses, who offer peer support, um, and connecting with people like you. And third, we really want to put an emphasis on action. So these courses are not just learning about it, but it's also learned by doing. So at the end of a course or a program, you have a portfolio. You've built something. You've done it. So you can show it in an interview. You can take something in your own business and actually improve it during the course. So by the end, your business is already in a better place. We think those three key areas will really make these classes engaging, makes the students remember and, and have something that will help them solve these challenges that James was just talking about. So we know that to make this happen, we need a team of experts. And fortunately, Polly and, and the UJ crew went across the country to find the best people. So I'm excited today to introduce you to some of those folks who are bringing UJ Accelerated to life. First, we're going to welcome Shelly Gardner to the stage. She's a native of the desert, a traveler, a higher ed maestro. And she's the one that's making sure that students are getting the classes they need and getting the credit they need. So welcome, Shelly. Great to have you. I'm going to hand you a mic. <laughs> perspective. Um, Ryan, everything from admissions to student services, registrar function, systems, automation, you name it, I've kind of done it. So really excited to be here and be a part of this team and more importantly excited to help students. So thanks Scott. Thank you Shelly, great to have you. All right, let's give it up for Shelly. <laughs> and next we welcome an innovator, a creative, a native youper, and someone who uh, actually saw KISS live just a couple weeks ago. So if you were wondering if KISS was still alive, they are. <laughs> They're playing music. Uh, we want to welcome to the stage all the way from Arizona, Noah Sarsnick. Welcome, everybody. Nola Zarnik. I'm the Director of Innovative Content Development. I'm really particularly excited to be here today to, to bear witness to this thing that was just an idea, a vision, several months ago. Now, today, as we speak, come into fruition as we announce the, the new division. I'm looking forward to continuing to develop the division itself, as well as collaborating with many of you, just to ensure we continue delivering the programs, the content, the, the innovative experiences that you're looking for. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nola. Great to have you. All right, so you've heard about how we're delivering these classes with the net knowledge network in action, but what are we actually going to teach? What are we doing here? Um, so the areas, what we, what we did is we looked at what is University of Jamestown already great at, and what does the market need, right? This combination of skill, expertise, and market demand. We have this crazy idea that we should actually ask what do people need in the market and then prepare students for those positions, right? And so when we looked at it, we came up with a, a good acronym because everyone likes a good acronym. So we're focused on what we're calling our healthy BLT. I don't know if such thing exists in the uh, food world, but for us, a healthy BLT means that we're going to teach healthcare, business, leadership, and technology. We feel like these are four core areas that the world needs, that UJ excels at, and is, that, is a place where we can find experts from this audience and from around the world to augment uh, the classes that we already have. So to tell you a little bit about um, the University of Jamestown's expertise in these areas and its programs that are already going on in Fargo and elsewhere, I'm excited to welcome to the stage Provost Dr. Paul Olson. He's a true Jimmy launching online education. He's dancing often with the Higher Learning Commission, and he's raising future Jimmys in his hometown of Jamestown. So welcome, Paul. Great to have you. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, it's an honor to be here today and help launch UJ Accelerated, uh, one of the very exciting things that we have going on at, at UJ. Like Scott said, in many ways, 
UGA Accelerated is an extension of what we already do well. And one of the words that the president used earlier that really hit home with me is the word courage. It took courage to open UJ back in 1883. It took courage to get us going in the late or the early 1900s and get us through World War I and World War II and to get us through the turbulent times of the 60s and the, the farm crisis uh, that faced this region in the 1980s and to get us where we are today. And the university has this wonderful history of being courageous and innovative in the face of hard times. And so facing labor shortages like we do today and the like, that's just another issue for UJ to, to, to take on. And I'm very excited to get to play a role in that. When we talk about a healthy BLT at UJ, it's really easy to focus on, on that because it's stuff that we do well. We are really good at healthcare professions. We've been preparing students to go on to medical school, to dental school, to optometry school for decades. We were the very first four-year nursing program in the state of North Dakota, and we've been doing that since back in the 1940s, and in about four or five weeks, we're gonna have a really exciting announcement coming out about our nursing program, so I'll just tease that for, for a little bit. Um, and, and so nursing is something that we have excelled at. Um, a little over a decade ago, we saw a need to expand physical therapy education in this region, and we jumped on it, and we opened our facility here in Fargo. And under the leadership of Dr. Sarah Voorhees, that program is thriving today and providing therapists for our entire region. Uh, a couple years ago, we saw the need for more clinical counselors to be in the region, and we started a master's degree in clinical counseling uh, that's now almost entirely online and is absolutely thriving. And so when we look at the area of healthcare, it's something that we as an institution are very good at. And we look forward to launching accelerated programs in that area that will lead to certifications and the like for students who are out there that are looking to upskill and looking to advance their careers in areas of, of health and healthcare. Um, additionally, when we move on from healthcare and we look at the B, the business side, the university was one of the very first colleges in the region to start offering business education back way back into the 1920s. We were doing that way before it was cool. Uh, the University of Jamestown was, was there. And today on campus, we offer a variety of, of options for our students with some very creative tracks to help students specialize in what they want to do as a career, in addition to giving them the broad-based education that they're going to need to be successful in the marketplace today, not just for their first job, but for their second job, third job, and as their career continues to evolve. Uh, and we also offer business in an online environment as well out of our Fargo office with programs that are online in business, in banking, and in industrial management. Uh, so that we have those that are already available that uh, UJ Accelerated programs will stack into uh, for students that want to stack their certificates into eventually uh, a bachelor's degree. Uh, on the leadership side, this might be where the University of Jamestown is at its very best. Uh, our former president, Bob Bedell, used to say that the University of Jamestown has been building character since 1883 as part of what we do with leadership. Uh, at the undergraduate level, we offer a character and leadership minor that is one of the absolute best programs, not just in the region, but across the country. It's an absolutely amazing program. Uh, six years ago, we wanted to take the tenets of that program to, to a much broader audience, and we created a master's degree uh, in leadership that is now available entirely online, and uh, like so many of our graduate programs today, is really thriving. Uh, quick digression, one of my favorite statistics right now, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it, is one out of every five Jimmys right now is a graduate student. It's not something a lot of people think about with UJ, but we are doing very well at the graduate level. 
Um, another area of leadership that we're doing really well at is in the area of teacher leadership. Uh, under the leadership of Chris Crabtree Groff, uh, professor of teacher education at UJ, uh, we have seen uh, absolutely magnificent uh, expansion of our teacher leadership programs, and uh, we have an amazing program in that area. And then when we get to the area of technology, UJ has long had strong computer science and IT undergraduate programs. Uh, that we offer in Jamestown, and the faculty uh, are, are jumping on some of the latest trends in cryptocurrency and the blockchain. Uh, and we're offering our very first course on uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain uh, this semester uh, to about 15 students in Jamestown. And uh, we're doing some mining ourselves, and hopefully that's going to help the endowment out uh, in, <laughs> in the coming, uh, coming years. And so I'm really excited as the provost to add the programs that UJ Accelerated is bringing to us to our academic portfolio and think that uh, even though the recent past has been phenomenal for the University of Jamestown, uh, the next 10 years are going to be even better. Thank you. Well, great job. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, let's dive in then a little bit of uh, what we're going to gonna be going to be teaching, right? What is this actually going to be? So, you know, we've talked to employers. We really asked them, what do you need? And, you know, I think one interesting thing that came out is that it's not just a specific skill, right? It's the combination of what I like to call adulting, learning how to communicate, how to work across teams, how to plan, how to manage multiple tasks, combined with the expertise and knowledge you would expect, right? And I think a liberal arts college like uh, University of Jamestown is perfectly positioned for this. Career-oriented liberal arts is exactly that, learning the thing you need to know and then learning how to do the thing you got to do, right? So we're really going to excel at that. Now, we know the knowledge economy that we all live in is only as good as the technology that underpins it. Um, if you were trying to get on Instagram yesterday, Katie, and you couldn't, you know that this is a problem, right? Um, we, we have over 375,000 open jobs in the United States in the infrastructure and cybersecurity space, and almost 1,000 right here in North Dakota today. I'm thinking that's not going to go down, right? The demand for that is not going down. Um, that's why we're really excited to announce our first program, our first uh, uh, boot camp we're launching in January 2022 is cybersecurity. So over eight weeks, you'll be able to learn the skills necessary to pass the CompTIA Security Plus certificate, which is essentially how you can get into the industry. So this is a boot camp that's perfect for people who want to get into a new industry. They don't have background in technology or cybersecurity. So if you're like me and you study political science and you decide to change careers, this might be for you. If you never went to school uh, or you want to start something new, this is a great way to get started. Now we partnered with uh, NDIT state of North Dakota and industry experts to build this curriculum from scratch so it has that engaging UJ touch that we think about, how to make it not only learning about it, but also doing it. And we know that some boot camps can cost over $10,000, $20,000, $30,000. If you're getting an undergraduate degree, you know, it's going to cost at least that much. But we want to make this really accessible because there's a lot of jobs, a lot of vacancies. We need these people now. Right? So this boot camp, we're really excited to bring to the market for $2,900 starting in January, and you can complete it in eight weeks. We also are excited to have financial aid options available. And so this is a program that we're excited to launch, and you can already go learn more, sign up, connect with us at accelerated.uj.edu slash cybersecurity. So let's give it up for cybersecurity. <laughs> yes. Now the next program that we're excited to launch is near and dear to my heart, something that I spent over a decade doing. Um, we know that businesses succeed when they can tell powerful stories online. And if the past year and a half taught us anything, uh, it's that businesses need to be online. I actually spent in my last position uh, over two months getting 100 businesses right here in Fargo online because they didn't have an online presence to sell when uh, COVID hit. There are currently 165,000 open positions in digital marketing and there's another 175,000 expected to come in the next 10 years. So this is a huge area of growth and need. And I wanted to show a little bit about the next program that we're excited to launch, which is digital marketing and analytics. But instead of having me talk to you about it, I thought I would introduce some of the faculty who will be teaching it, the professors of practice that we're bringing in, and a little bit about why it's going to be such an exciting program. So let's kick it over to the digital marketing and analytics video. Who you know matters. Who you know is based on what you share. Your network used to be based on where you were from, your last name, where you went to school. 
Today, you control your own access if you're willing and able to create. Welcome to Digital Marketing and Analytics by UJ Accelerated. My name is Cam Hauser and I have made thousands of videos. This course is distilling that knowledge down from those thousands of videos so that you don't have to make so many to get the same learnings that I do. Pandemic or not, learning video skills matters. Video scales your reach. You'll learn these skills in class through all the lessons that I had to learn building up these skills over time and through learning by doing. It's not really a choice for businesses anymore whether they want to be on social or not. The fact is, if they want to be a business with any online presence, their customers will expect them to have a social media presence. So what that means is that every brand, company, and business needs a social media manager, which is why these skills are so important and so in demand. Three key skills that you'll learn in this class are actually my main social media superpowers, which are one, how to make a social media strategy that'll impress any stakeholder. Two, how to build content calendars in your sleep. And three, how to make social media content that'll perform well on any social platform, existing or future. Paid digital, it's so important for a company because uh, we're all online. You know, that's where, the, that's where your customers are. And so you need to meet them where they're at. Three big things that you would learn uh, for, from a digital marketing class would be uh, Google ads, um, specifically Google search or Google shopping. You know, how to pay to rank um, high in the uh, Google search results. Uh, Facebook ads and how to reach your users on social media platforms like Facebook. Um, and then strategy. When you're an online business, you need traffic because without traffic, nothing else flows downhill. You're going to learn to become a content hacker. So how do you publish the best content on the internet in your niche? We've used these tactics that you're going to learn about to grow CoSchedule into a multi-million dollar product line, which is now a brand with multiple products underneath it. So this stuff works. We're going to teach you how. Digital marketing is something that I think every business needs, and it's also an opportunity for someone to move into a new career. So this is a really fun uh, certificate program because it might be something that Gate City needs, right? It might be something that the city of Fargo needs. It might be something that uh, you know the Small Business Development Center needs. It might also be something that you or someone you know wants to get started in. So uh, with the digital marketing program, you can take a specific course. So if you just want to learn one of the things you just heard about, you can do that. Or you can take all four courses uh, to get the digital marketing uh, certificate. Um, so these programs start in January. Every five weeks, the next course begins. So January, February, March, April. And they last for six weeks, weeks each. Again, we want to make this a really competitive price point. We thought about if you were going to go to school, if you're going to just go take a class from any institution in the Midwest or elsewhere, how do you do it, right? How do you just pay for a class? That's actually really hard, it's nearly impossible if you've ever tried to go do that. So that's what we want to do here is how do we charge the same thing that a student at University of Jamestown might pay to take a class like this? So you can take any of these classes for $975 or the entire certificate for $3,900 uh, over the course of 20 weeks. And we think this will get you not only FaceTime with experts like this, they're in Austin, Amsterdam, Fargo, uh, as well as meeting peer supporters who are going to help get uh, students into industry. So we're really excited about digital marketing and analytics. And if you uh, meet someone in this room who is in that video, you can say thanks, and you might want to take a class from him. So we're excited for digital marketing and, anal and analytics. So we'll give it up for digital marketing and analytics. They're really excited. Thanks, Nathan and Chris, for your help. Yes. All right. Thank you, Crystal Online, for saying how excited you are. If you're online, go ahead and drop in the chat which of these programs you might be interested in, because we're going to do a little, little test on that at the end. So the next class I'm really excited about, this is an individual uh, intense class, so four weeks. But it's about something that all of us do, and none of us really think about improving, which is how do we learn? How do you learn how to learn? Um, if, if you are involved in strategy, if you're a creative person, uh, if you're in charge of others, you're probably reading getting information and then trying to distill that right into strategy, into uh, things to do. But no one really taught you that. You probably picked it up along the way. And I'm guessing if you spent just a little bit of time, you could get a lot better. You could improve that one skill that you use every day, saving yourself time and creating better output. So that's what this class is all about, which is called meta-learning. 
So I'm really excited to welcome uh, our Professor Dave O'Hara to tell you a little bit about meta-learning and why you might want to take this starting in November. Hi, I'm Dave O'Hara, Professor of Philosophy, Classics, Ecology, and Religion. In this class, you'll learn how to distinguish between what you can control and what you can't control. You'll learn how to see some of your own blind spots and how to correct them. You'll discover how you can become a positive influence in your community and workplace. And you'll do so by learning how to spot the good ideas that are all around you and to help them to grow. I wanna teach you how to find those ideas quickly, how to let those ideas work their way into your everyday life and how to make them readily accessible and authentically yours. I'll also teach you how to acquire knowledge quickly and how to sort out good knowledge from bad information. And we'll learn how to communicate that knowledge in a way that makes others better and improves our own work and our community. I hope you'll join me. So you can go online right now to accelerated.uj.edu slash meta learning to sign up. If you are a manager professional, this course is for you. This is not for someone maybe trying to get into the industry of learning, but uh, for all of us who are trying to uh, gather information. And in an age with a lot of misinformation, it's going to be really fascinating to take this course. It starts November uh, 15th and finishes before Christmas. So again, four weeks, twice a week for 90 minutes. So something you can do over lunch and learn a lot. So we'd love to get that into businesses. That would be a great uh, learning experience um, to, to, to reach out to people. So the next class we want to introduce, uh, the final one for today, um, talks about a specific need as well. So if we can advance the slide there for me. There we go. All right. So one skill that I think a lot of us are afraid of is actually numbers, right? Financial fluency. If you are a business owner, if you work in a company, we have to deal with numbers. We don't have to be an accountant, a CFO, but we have to be able to make decisions. Is this going to be good for our business or not? And so instead of struggling with the books, instead of focusing on specific input output, how do we create financial strategy? That's what this next intensive course is all about. So starting at the end of October, we're going to have a four-week class um, that is all about how to trans uh, transform how you see financial reports. So your balance sheet won't be a boring report. Instead, you're going to connect to it. You're going to figure out how to position yourself, how to price your products, and how to create a business strategy. And so the professor for this, I'm really excited to have join us all the way from Ireland. He's a knight, so the queen's actually touched his shoulders with a sword. Um, he's a proud father of four. He's been around Europe. He's living on the green aisle in Ireland, and he's here to help us tell stories and understand finances from a new way. He's a lovable Janet Yellen, your friend and mine. I want to introduce Stephen Wilkinson to introduce the Financial Fluency course. Finance is the language of business. Without financial fluency, you are seriously at risk of failure because you do not understand what the business needs or when it's getting into danger. The top three skills that you will be learning taking the Financial Fluency Practitioner course are number one, a simple mental model which will allow you to understand the point and purpose of business finance. That's key to starting off is having this mental model that you really understand context and purpose of the numbers that you're seeing. Second thing is an ability to use your financials as a strategic advisor to your business, probably your best strategic advisor. The third thing that you'll learn is how to calculate your stock price. This is a what I call a super KPI which concentrates the entire financial performance down into one single number that you can track like a stock price every month. Um, or every week if that's how quickly you get your financials. I think one of the things that will surprise you most about this course is the way that we use art and literature as gateways to understanding the point and purpose and narrative of finance. For entrepreneurs, the purpose is to extract the story that the financials are telling and to allow them to engage with the financial information um, in a way that is entirely different from the purpose of accounting. So that's what we do. We use art, we use literature, we use paintings, um, 
poetry to tell that story and to build a mental model that allows you to construct your own very special and unique relationship with financial numbers that your business is producing. And don't you want to listen to that voice every week anyway, right? <laughs> I think Stephen's in the chat. He's online from Ireland. So hi, Stephen. I can see even in the chat, um, you know, you have that beautiful accent as you type as well. It's great to see. Uh, so we're really excited. Stephen's class starts at the end of October, October 25th, and finishes before Thanksgiving. So again, four weeks, meet twice a week for 90 minutes. So this is, again, targeted towards professionals, people who uh, are not in a financial position. So not the CFO, not the accountant, people who deal with numbers but maybe don't feel like it's their jam, right? People who have to and don't want to. Um, it's going to be a really eye-opening course. I'm excited to take it personally as well. Um, and one thing that we do with every course is we want you in the audience to be able to learn these skills, even if you don't have time or the ability to take that class. So before every class, we offer a one-hour webinar where we have the instructor take one of those lessons and share it with you. So next Tuesday at 11 AM, you can come listen to Stephen again uh, at 11 AM for an hour. And he's going to walk through this model of how you can take what you look at in an art museum and then look at a balance sheet and actually see what do you notice in a balance sheet that you might not see normally when you're looking at it. It's going to be a really fun time. So if you go to accelerated.uj.edu, you can see our blog post and register for that. Free and open to everyone. We'd love to have you join. That'd be a great chance to learn more. So all of these classes, again, we want to make them accessible. Both uh, Meta Learning and the Financial Fluency courses are priced at $977. So again, exactly what a student would pay, because we want you to realize that learning is a lifelong endeavor. right? It's not just for the 18 to 22-year-old. As, as Dr. Peterson mentioned, 73% of learners are not traditional students. right? So that's all of us. We can learn, and we can continue to grow personally, which we're so excited about. Um, so we know that courses are built on the needs of businesses, which is why we're so excited to welcome our next team member to the stage. Uh, Tina Lawrence is the flight controller for all things UJ Accelerated. She keeps us rocking and rolling. She's known by everyone on campus and maybe most importantly is known as a proud Nana. So let's welcome Tina to the stage. Thank you, everyone, and thanks for being here. Uh, I want to just back up a little bit and explain to you how did we get to Phoenix. So uh, as a part of our strategic plan, we recognize this market of learners that we have not served. So in conjunction with a consultant, we looked at five different geographical areas. We looked at California. We looked at Idaho, Colorado, Texas, and then the Phoenix area. What we learned was that the Phoenix area is a fast-growing area, and many of the industries that are coming are industries that map well to things that we do well or things that we want to develop anyway. So Dr. Peterson, Dr. Olson, and I spent a fair amount of time in Phoenix this summer, which was not ideal planning, <laughs> summer, but we learned a lot. We met with all kinds of people because we wanted to listen. What are the needs of the employers and the learners in that area that we can bring these products to them? So we met with uh, chambers of commerce, economic development. We met with um, health systems. We made a connection with a consultant, Christine Kraft, who is, who is our strategic consultant in Arizona who helped us build relationship with healthcare systems, with law enforcement. We met with community college leaders and high school principals. And of course, we listened to our alumni. So we had a lot of listening sessions so we could learn what is the market and what are the needs. Because we're here, we're here, like we're here, we're down there to serve the needs of those employers as well. So after, after those trips of listening, we decided that Phoenix was where we were going to call UJ Accelerated's home. So we have identified our, our location. It's in downtown Phoenix. It's called Park Central. We liked it because there is great public transportation for our students to access that location. Uh, we like the environment. It's a newly renovated complex that includes some other educational institutions. We like being in that environment. Creighton is there. Nerdery is there. There's a nursing school, uh, along with businesses and shops and coffee shops and restaurants. It, it'll be a wonderful, welcoming I place for our students to be. 
that's where Shelley and her staff will be there to serve the students who enroll in these programs. Because the University of Jamestown provides a solid support to all our students, the Phoenix location will be no different. We're there to help those students reach success through completing these programs. Uh, we know there's some, there's some big heavy hitters down there. People would say, you know ASU's here, right? You know Grand Canyon's here, right? Yes, we do. But nobody told us don't come. What we heard was there is a need. So we decided this is the right direction for the University of Jamestown and we're looking forward to the Phoenix location. Thank you. Thank you. So we are excited to announce that uh, UJ Accelerated will be based in Phoenix, Arizona. We'll have obviously our Fargo campus with professional studies online. We'll have the University of Jamestown in Jamestown. And of course the programs that we just talked about that'll be online. And we're doing this because the modern learner needs accessibility, right? It's accessibility in location. It's accessibility in time, so it fits your lifestyle. It's also accessibility uh, in cost, right? And one of the ways that we can make these programs accessible is with an unfair advantage that we have in the state of North Dakota, which is the state bank. So the only state in the country that has a state bank, and we're really excited to bring up the master enabler of all things education. He's a board of trustee member and, of course, a proud UJ alum. So please welcome Todd Steinwan to the stage to talk about the Bank of North Dakota. Thank you. You, uh, you really oversold the master of education, but I, we are really proud of our team at Bank of North Dakota. Um, so a uh, couple things that uh, I wanted to say. I am a proud alum of the University of Jamestown. Um, and I, the one thing I can promise you is I've been on the board, I don't know, almost 20 years now. And I can tell you we're going to do it right. Um, when we put our mind to something, we're all in. Um, and on behalf of, I'm here today as the president of the Bank of North Dakota, but more importantly, I'm here representing the Board of Trustees uh, of the University of Jamestown. So a couple of things I just want to talk about. James Lamont, I worked very closely with James. Um, you know, the Bank of North Dakota has been around for 100 years. We are the only state-owned bank in the nation. Our mission is to provide um, commerce, agriculture, and industry for the state of North Dakota. Uh, we work closely uh, with James and his team. Uh, they're the cheerleaders. They go out and recruit the businesses. We're the finance guys. So we get to try and figure out a way to finance the projects that are coming. But we work very closely. But I can tell you the biggest thing we are hearing, especially in North Dakota, but all across the nation, is a workforce and a trained workforce is just really, really tough right now. That's what all businesses are needing. Um, and I'm so proud of our university is taking the step to address this need. Um, so we're really excited about it. Um, it what, a, what a neat opportunity for a small private institution to take the step and, and really meet the needs there. Uh, there's a couple things uh, that we, we have developed at the Bank of North Dakota. Uh, we have been encouraged to develop a, a, a way to finance certificate programs. So we have the DEAL program, which we provide student loans for students in, uh, ac uh, across the state uh, to, to finance their, their um, normal education, their four-year degrees and their degrees, but we've also developed a program called the SEAL program where we're going to uh, develop a program to finance certificate degrees also, um, or certificates. So the only problem, we were sitting down talking as a group, and I got a recent update where we're at, and then, you know, our, our, our team looked at it and said, you know, Todd, it, it's good, well, we can make this work, we're working to put something together, but he said, you know, when you look at the cost of what they're offering this at, I'm not sure how many people are going to need to borrow money to do that, which what a great problem. What a great thing that the university is doing is making sure that these are affordable. Uh, the Bank of North Dakota is committed to try and develop financing opportunities for those that may not have the cash on hand or employers aren't willing to pay for it or those sorts of things. Uh, but quite frankly, I'm really proud from the university standpoint that they're making these really, really affordable. So. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to say a few words and uh, really, really excited about this new program. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. <laughs> well, to make this happen, it's not just us. We need you. The U UJ Accelerated is, is providing short courses and programs to accelerate careers. This might be a new career. It might be in a position that you already have, moving up or gaining new skills. 
And these certificates, these programs, they can eventually map to bachelor's or master's degrees. So you can start at UJ Accelerated, continue to the University of Jamestown, get your master's degree in those healthy DLT areas, and really start to make an impact in the community. We don't think that education has to be slow, right? We think that you can get started now, get the skills you need, and continue to stack these experiences, these classes, on top of one another to get to where you want to go. So today, what we're asking for is you to join us as UJ Ambassadors. So you all have, if you're here in person, uh, a book here that says UJ Ambassador. For those of you online in the chat, we are going to send an email where you can get these sent to you as well. And as UJ Ambassadors, you get a couple things. Because as we said, we want to educate and inspire everyone. right? So first of all, um, you're going to have a chance to join our fire fireside chats. We're bringing experts in to these courses. And it's a chance to hear someone, maybe like Nathan, talk about digital marketing. right? And you can come join that one hour chat with Nathan or with Steven on Tuesday. right? You're welcome to join these chats as an ambassador. You're also going to have access to videos from these courses. So as we finish the courses up, We'll have highlight reels that ambassadors will get first access to because we want to inspire you to be lifelong learners. We also want you to give us feedback and ideas for what we should be teaching. As uh, Dr. Peterson mentioned, we're talking to businesses, we're listening to needs, and we believe you are the best gauge of what should be taught because you're out there working, you're talking to people. So come to us, tell us what's needed so that we can continue to improve and make programs that are going to impact our communities. Now, in exchange for this, we ask you to do three simple things. First of all, we would love to have you share these courses that we announced today. They're all available online at accelerate.uj.edu. And I'm guessing you know at least one person in your life who maybe needs to learn a little bit more about finance, or maybe needs to learn how to learn, or maybe wants to start a career in digital marketing or, or get skills for that job that they already have. Second is we're looking for businesses who might want to offer this to their employees. We believe that a, a number of our programs are going to be great fits to make uh, employees better skilled and, and more up to date on best practices in the industry. And we know that a trained workforce and businesses that offer educational benefits have higher retention. So we believe that businesses who, who work with UJ Accelerate are going to do a better job of keeping their own employees and making them more skilled. So we would love to talk to you and figure out what that looks like for your business. Third, we're looking for mentors and speakers for our classes. We want to connect our students with people like you who are making an impact. That could be as simple as a chat with one of our students. It could be a fireside uh, chat with the entire class. Or it might be that you join a breakout room and work on a project. So feel free to reach out and bring your expertise to us. Because we know that the University of Jamestown is a network. This is a community of people around the world that have learned together and have a shared vision of how to change a community. So we'll be sending everyone a copy of uh, this recording for, for being here, as well as uh, the ambassador ideas. And so for those of you online, we'll be able to send you a book and get you uh, connected. Um, and if you're remote, you can uh, go ahead and respond to my email so that you get a copy as well. So to close, we want to just thank you so much for supporting this effort. We really do believe that education can transform lives. And if we think about what education should look like, we believe that UJ Accelerated might just be that. We're being nimble, we're being entrepreneurial, and we're going to try this model out, get your feedback, and continue to iterate until we find exactly what our community needs. And we can only know that with your feedback. So to close, I want to welcome back to the stage uh, Dr. Polly Peterson, the president of University of Jamestown, to give us some final thoughts and send us out as we embark on this important mission. So let me grab a microphone for you. <laughs> I just want to finish up by saying thank you all for being here and believing in the University of Jamestown. Uh, several years ago, a reporter for North Dakota stopped by my office for an interview. It was the first time in 29 years that he had been reporting and, and landed himself at the University of Jamestown. After the interview, he said to me, he put down his little um, notepad and he said, you know, UJ is a small college of big thinkers. And I've never forgotten that. We're a small college of big thinkers. And I think as Paul said, as we've said earlier, we're a small college with courageous thinkers. We're willing to meet this market where the market is. We're willing to adapt in education, which is a field that isn't known for innovation. But we're here to do it. Because we do believe in students. As Shelley said, most importantly, it's about the learner. Learning should be fun. It should be inspirational. It should be engaging and it should be actionable. And that's what this program is going to be. So join us. I already think I've signed up for all four. 
because I love learning, right? It's constant. Learning never stops. And that's what the university's been about for 138 years, is preparing students for the future. So thank you. We're going to do this together. Please join us. Sign up for a course. We look forward to meeting all of you in the classroom. Take care. Yeah, you got to stay here because there's one last thing. Okay. Okay, so to send us out, Holly's going to say the famous phrase. So if you have any connection or if you want to be a, a new member of this collection, we're going to shout Go Jimmy's on three. One, two, three. Go Jimmy's! Thank you. Have a great day. Woo!